Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Jesse Warden here. Two of my viewers have asked me what are the tools and techniques I use to do videos and why? Okay, pretty big topic. Why? My goal, every day you learn something to take to your job tomorrow and it enhances it in some way, whether it makes you a better programmer or helps you understand a platform, language that you're not used to, and gives you context and helps you enhance that old system better. Anything I can do to make your life better from a programming perspective, that's, that's my end goal. I never liked how speakers or books would explain things in terms and jargon that I just, from computer science or engineering I didn't understand. And once I learned it, I'm like, why didn't they just say that? Why didn't they say X, Y, and Z instead of blah, blah, science, blah, blah, blah. A lot of those things used to drive me bonkers. This also goes in the effect of demystifying. You'll see a lot of concepts pitched and you'll see kids or seniors, even adults that fear because it looks so mysterious. And a lot of the stuff is just hard work, memorization, and lots and lots of trial and error, emphasis on the error. So if you're not afraid of failing a lot and doing some hard work and memorizing things, that's it. That's really all it's about. Having access to those resources is the problem that a lot of us are still trying to solve. Give back. I've never really had the opportunity to spend a lot of my time in open source. I either ran my own business where I work 60 hour weeks doing a lot of hustling and paperwork, aside from trying to keep up in programming. When I work for employers, I spent the majority of my time on clients and taking care of them, managing the teams. So I never really got a lot of time to do intersource and open source. So this is my way of giving back to a community that's given me so much. On things that I don't know how to do, making these videos and being able to articulate something in 140 characters is a very effective way to force yourself to learn something very quickly. Next to a deadline on a project. How? I use a MacBook Pro from 2016, I think. Not the one with the bar. I didn't want the new thing, the new Mac. Everyone says they're horrible. I didn't want them. I also have a really cheap camera mount. I can put my iPhone 6 in this or an iPhone 7, whatever else. And this guy is a great stand for moving around both outside and inside. I also have two additional lamps to have some splash lighting so it gets rid of some of the shadows. I use ScreenFlow to edit. It's a lot simpler than Premiere, Final Cut Pro, Apple Motion. Those are very powerful tools for doing simple video with minor compositing. When you want to ScreenFlow your screen and zoom in and out, ScreenFlow is the best. Multiple takes. This video that I'm showing you right now actually took seven tries over the course of three hours. Sometimes a five minute video can take a total of 20 minutes to produce. Other times it takes about six hours. That includes filming, editing, editing out all the so's, ums, rights, uh, lip smacking, all that stuff. You don't like it, so you start over from scratch. The code doesn't work, so you have to throw that away. It just depends on the content in the night. A lot of times I'll actually speak for hours and only get five minutes of good footage out of it. One other thing you'll notice too is when I edit videos for the screen, it's a significantly higher resolution, whereas iPhone 6, even the, the back camera will not always take large videos. It's actually 720. So I have to get the crop tool, change it to 1280 by 720. So it's still HD, but it significantly reduces the file size and upload time and makes it a lot more responsive. Even for videos that span past five minutes, ScreenFlow will start to slow down if you have a significant amount of audio and video slices, which I tend to create with all these gaps and uhs and ums and whatnot. Let's open object destruction, for example. You'll notice there is a ton of slices here. That is not what the video looks like originally. You go to the raw video here. I'm gonna drag that onto the screen you'll see that original video and he has these spots. So for example, I'll, I'll zoom in so I can see about a second here. Box to swim to a point so that in this pause, I'll just get rid of. I'll hit T and then go to the point where I start to talk. And hit W and close it. It'll be the swim to a point so that it'll be the So that, do you really need to say so every sentence? No, you do not. So I'll zoom in even more so that get rid of that point. It'll be the groundwork for them getting bread and knowing how to get there. Perfect. You repeat that for the entire video and then you end up with this 20 billion slices. So it looks kind of like the original, which is that. I should reiterate, the most important ideas come from you, viewers. I've got a ton of ideas. You all have submitted the yarn one I still got to do. Better testing around Mongoose. A lot more automation around serverless, Angular, React. So if you got any, let me know. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you all tomorrow.